Hello and welcome to this second video on GNOME Native Kit. This is part of a video series where we go into details about what GNOME Native Kit is and why you would want to use it. In the previous video, we showed you a system diagram. This one is more detailed because we're going to go into exactly what gRPC is and how it helps you. So you're a developer and you're interested in writing an app for GNOLAND. You go to the repo and you start looking around inside the core GNO code. Let's follow an example from our readme for GNO native kit. If you click on one of these links here, like GNO client, you can look at the existing API that exists in the core code. So here we're looking inside the GNO repo in the GNO client package. If we click on client queries, we can find a lot of interesting functions. For example, render. This allows you to call a render function on the blockchain and to get back the result. This is great, but of course you may have a problem because you notice that this is written in Go and you are developing an application in another native language like JavaScript or C Sharp or something else. And so you can't access this function directly. Not only you can't call Go, but you would need to use these specific Go structures like client and the specific uh, results object. And so what to do? Well, this is where GNO Native Kit comes in to solve this problem. GNO Native Kit provides a thin layer on top of the core API, giving you access to it with gRPC. So on top of this block in the diagram, we have the gRPC server in GNO Native Kit. The G stands for Google Protobuf. This is a well-established communication system for sending messages back and forth between different programming languages. Your application is a gRPC client and it creates a simple protobuf message and sends it to the server which then sends it into the core Go code and interacts with the blockchain. But don't worry because you don't need to be a protobuf expert to use GNO native kit. Let's see how that works. In the readme for GNO native kit, we can click on this link to go and look at the API documentation that's available to you as the application writer. Let's scroll down a little bit and here is render. We click on render and again we see a well-documented function with arguments to pass in and a result to get back but the nice thing is that you can use this for many language. Let's look at an example that's already in the you know, native kit code as, as a, a helper. How would you call render? Well, you would have your uh, gRPC client, which is here in the system diagram at the top, and you simply call the render API function which is automatically available to you as part of the protobuf infrastructure. We saw in the API documentation that there's two arguments. One is the package path and one is the arguments to the render method. And so uh, in JavaScript, you would simply construct a little object with that information and call render and get back the result. The gRPC message is sent to the server. It gets the result and sends the result back to you in your application. 
it's useful to see how this would look from a different programming language. So here is the same example using C Sharp. C Sharp is a very different language, but gRPC has a universal way of interacting with protobuf messages. So it looks very similar. You have your client, you'd call render, you'd build a little data structure with the required information. And after this is finished, you would get back a reply with the result that you want. And this will look very similar from Java, from Swift, from other programming languages that are supported. In addition to providing this communication bridge to the core Go code, the gRPC server also maintains other information which your application needs. For example, when we called render, it passed on the request to some blockchain. Well, which blockchain? That information is also maintained by the gRPC server. If we go back to our top level API documentation, we can see that there's a method like set remote. So it's easy to call this and to change the URL of the remote blockchain that you're interacting with. There's lots of other helper like this, like you can select the chain ID, you can configure which keys are active, etc. All that is, is maintained for you here uh, by the gRPC server. In a future video, we'll go into a specific application example and dive into the code. For now, hopefully we've shown how GNU Native Kit solves uh, your problem of needing to access the core code from other programming languages using gRPC communications and how it's fairly simple to write code which does that. How would you get started? Well, you can look through the repository for GNU Native Kit and if you do have questions, uh, please uh, go ahead and click on issues in the GNU Native repo and create a new issue. And we'll get your question and get back to you. That's it for now. Thank you.